Welcome to this video on the new skills you'll need for integration at level three. We're gonna cover two parts. The first is the differentiation table and how to use that for the integration topic. The second is the new integration table you'll get on your formula sheet. First, let's look at the differentiation table. So you're gonna see this table on your formula resource sheet and every single one of these is a different differentiation that you could have done. And you would have seen this in the differentiation topic. The key thing to know about integration is that it's the opposite of differentiation. So that means we're gonna use this table in the opposite direction, from the right-hand side back to the left-hand side. Now this top example of logs, we'll cover a little bit more in a moment, but let's cover a few of the tricky ones. First, let's look at e's. So if we wanna integrate 6e to the power of 2x plus three, we're integrating that, so we derive that power up here. So the derivation of 2x plus three is just two. So we write out our original expression, that's still 6e to the power of 2x plus 3, and we divide by that derivation, which is 2. And of course, we still have plus c on the end there. Now we could be good and simplify that 6 divided by 2 down to 3e to the power of 2x plus 3, still plus c. Now for another example, we could look at integrating sine x, and you'll see sine here on the table will integrate back to cos x. Now one thing to notice is this negative sign in the front. Now if you ever come across a negative sign on the integration side, that's this right hand column, you can ignore it and put the negative on the left hand side. So that means sine could integrate through to negative cos of x and of course plus c. Or for a final example, we could look at sec x tan x dx. So we can see on the right hand side that we have sec x tan x and that will integrate across to sec x. So we can write out sec x plus c as our integration. So this is how we use our differentiation table for integration. We use this table in the opposite direction. Now let's move on to look at the integration table, which is this table here, also on your formula sheet. We'll cover each of these three terms one by one. This first term here just says how to integrate. It says when you have a power, you should add one to the power and divide by that new power. And of course, you should add c onto the end. So we already know this first rule, but it says it doesn't work when the power is negative one, which is where we get onto the second rule. The rule of fractions and powers doesn't work when we have to the power of negative one. And let's see why. If you have one over x, that's the same as saying one divided by x to the power of one. Now we know that when integrating, we don't like x terms on the bottom of a fraction, if we can help it. So we wanna make that to the power of negative one. But if we try to integrate, we add one to the power, which would be x to the power of zero, and then divide by the new power. But in maths, we cannot divide by zero. It just doesn't work. So we need a new rule, which is the second rule here. And that says, if you don't have a power on the bottom of a fraction, you need to add log in front of that power. So this one would in fact integrate through to log of x. And of course we still have our plus c. Now you'll notice that there's these straight lines on either side of the x rather than brackets. That just means on the off chance that whatever's inside these brackets is a negative, it will turn it into a positive. It's called the absolute value. But it's not common to need to worry about that in your exams. Just treat them like brackets. So for an example, if we have seven over two x, we know that there's no power to the x, therefore we can leave our constants, our numbers, two over seven the same, and multiply this x term by log. So that becomes two over seven log x plus c. But what happens when we don't have a nice single x term on the bottom of a fraction? That's when we use our final rule, when the denominator is not a single x term. So here's an example. There's no power on the bottom of a fraction, but it's not just a simple x term like in rule number two. So what we have to do is differentiate what's on the bottom of this fraction. And in this case, this differentiates down to two. And we have to check that this differentiation is the same as what's on the top of the fraction. If it is, we're okay. And that's what this rule means. Whatever's on the bottom of the fraction differentiated should be on the top of a fraction. That means we can just do log of whatever's on the bottom of the fraction. Of course, we add our C on as well. Now, sometimes it doesn't always work out so perfectly, but it should be close. For example, here when we have 12 divided by 2x plus 6. So again, because there's no power, we differentiate what's on the bottom and that gives us 2. But you'll notice that's not the same as what's on the top of the fraction. In fact, this 12 is 6 times bigger than the 2 that we found down here. So what we need to do in that case is we need to multiply 6 by this whole integration. Because 6 times the 2 would equal the 12. But now what we have on the top of our fraction is the same as what we differentiated from the bottom of our fraction here. So now we can keep the 6 out the front and just put log of whatever's on the bottom of the fraction. And again, plus c. Now we can cover an even more complicated example, but the same steps apply. We notice there's no overall power on the bottom of a fraction, so that means we differentiate what's on the bottom of the fraction, which will give us 4e to the power of 4x plus 2 plus 4x to the power of 3. And then we see, is it the same as what's on the top? And it's not the same. Again, you notice the top is one quarter of the size. 
So if we want it to be the same, which is four times on the top, we need to multiply the outside by that one over four. So now it is the same, and we can write out one over four, we leave this out the front, log of whatever's on the bottom of the fraction, and plus c. So this covers all of the new skills that you need for level three. This covers how to integrate, fractions that don't work with the power rule because it hasn't got a power on the bottom of the fraction, and when the denominator is a little bit more complicated, it's not a single x term. And this is your integration table. You need to remember from your differentiation table that you do it in the opposite direction, from the right-hand side across back to the left-hand side because it's the opposite of differentiation. And remember as well that all of these negative terms can just be put on the opposite side of the table if you need to. And these are all of the new skills you need to know for level three.